so let me get my stuff here this morning. You're ready to have some, some more church? Amen. Amen. We've already had church. We could probably just say, okay, that was good. Let's go. <laughs> I, I felt it. But I do have a word that I want to give to you today um, that God has placed on my heart. I actually had this plan for last week, but the weather conditions certainly put a, a halt on that. Uh, and I thank you for braving it today. We've got one door that's the porch is froze up. You can't get the doors to open and some icy spots that never did thaw. Uh, but you made it out and we're grateful for that this morning. So, so since you're here, why don't you go ahead and just seek after God and get what all he has for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, good looking group. Good looking group. I, uh, every year, want to give to you, I probably need to get rid of this mint, don't I? Is that going to be an annoyance to you if I keep sucking on this lifesaver? <laughs> okay. Keeps my mouth watered. Whatever. Not much of a lifesaver, is it? Anyway. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Every year I always seek the Lord about what I feel like he would have for us to say and, and just a, a, a chart or a, a general guideline and a map. And please welcome Judy Knapp to church this morning, would you please? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. So today is, uh, we're already in the year 2024, 21 days into it, into 2024. Uh, we've been in the Hebrew calendar. We've been in the new year for, uh, according to the way the Jews have set up their calendar. And they go by a lunar calendar rather than the solar calendar. So you have the Hebraic calendar which overlaps with the, the, the Gregorian calendar, which is on a solar uh, rotation or, or uh, plan cycle. And so 20 is a decade, and the year 5784 is the decade, uh, or is the year of the Hebrew calendar. So we have, not only do we have the 20s, the roaring 20s, but we have the, the, the 80s. Okay, how many, of you like, how many of you like the 80s? I was younger, thinner, darker, and more hair. Amen. You go to the 60s, okay. We got uh, hairdressers here today, Susan and, and uh, Gina, <clears throat> and they laugh about this because they say they've cut my hair through thick and thin. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> but here we are in the, the 80s and the 20s, the overlapping of that. And they both carry great meaning. And, and so this morning, I, I want to give you a couple of things. At the beginning, four years ago, uh, 2020, I was sharing. I had, a, had a, a football field laid out up here. We had the red zone with the 20-yard line and marking into the end zone. I, when I did that and I called it the red zone, I had no idea that they were going to call the, uh, the red zone uh, with the, the pandemic that hit shortly after that. Uh, but I felt we were in the red zone. We have to keep on pushing through. And it seems like games change, the strategy changes when you get inside the red zone if you're going to win a game. And so anyway, I, the Lord had given me a scripture uh, a word that to go by, go by uh, in the passages of Scripture. Later on, I found out that there were other uh, ministers, uh, notable ministries that, that had done the same thing. But the Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, uh, beginning with verse 20, I felt like it was, a, it was a theme that would be carried on through this decade. And Second Chronicles 20 uh, verse 24, it says that so they 
rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, uh, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you're going to prosper, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you'll prosper. And in the midst of 2020, you know, how many of you know it was an important time to believe in God? Amen. Believe his prophetic word. Amen. I carried that over for 21, and it said, And when he had consulted the people, he appointed those who would sing to the Lord and who should sing praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army, they were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. So the 2021, 20, we uh, kind of carried that verse of saying, we believe you, Lord, and we're going to praise you regardless of what it looks like. We're going to go on and, and praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Uh, 2022, now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments or ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. You see there were three groups that had, had uh, teamed up together against uh, Israel against Judah and anyway it says they come against Judah and they were uh, and they were defeated and then verse 23 last year for the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them and when they had come to an end of the inhabitants of Seir they helped destroy one another which is a very interesting thing and I believe that in this decade, uh, this past year, when, when Tess said that about the God's working, we, even when we don't see him, we, not, we may not be aware, but I believe that this last year, there were things that were taking place that was being revealed. And the enemy was turning against itself. We're going to see more of that. And the, in 24, I believe is true for this year, it says, so when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness there they looked toward the multitude and there 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 were dead bodies fallen on the earth and no one had escaped i believe that this coming year is going to be a year when we're going to see the results of what god's been doing behind the scenes while we were praising him when they tried to shut us down when they said you can't do this when they wanted to close our mouths when they wanted to tell us what was essential and what wasn't essential we just kept on praising god and in the midst of it, I believe that it's going to be a revealing that we're going to see the enemy has turned against himself and our, our enemies are falling. Amen? Amen. Amen? So I believe that, that we're going to see more and more of this. So with these numbers, how many of you know that it's, it's, it's an interesting thing how numbers play in the Bible and with God? But I, I feel like a scripture that I want to look at this year is we can look at Psalm 24. Now, you have to understand, some of this material I'm giving you today, I gave it in advance to 5784, which actually began September the 15th of this past fall. So I gave a little bit of it, knowing that we were going to see more of it today. So if you've heard it before, it's okay. Uh, it's just, it, they overlap. Does that make sense? Yes. But Psalm 24 is a beautiful psalm. And uh, like I said, I had come up with this five, six months ago, and I'm now hearing that many people are, are claiming that as well. And some of the things that you will hear doesn't mean that we've plagiarized or anything like that. It's just that that's what God, I believe, is speaking. The Bible tells us in Psalm 24, says that the earth is the Lord's. Everybody say that. The earth is the Lord's. The Lord. Amen. And all its fullness, everything, the world and those who dwell therein. For he formed it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who's not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. Remember a few weeks ago I said going into uh, 2024, some things that we had to do. Number one, we wrote things down that we wanted to get rid of, leave it in the past. We're moving forward, and we have to go with, uh, uh, with pure, clean hands and pure heart. And I gave you the example of what I felt like the two things the Lord was telling me was purging and pruning. That we were cleansing ourselves and cutting off some things. And that's the only way we're going to make it this year is getting rid of some things that, that will hold us down. So verse 4 it says, uh, or 5 rather, He's, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is Jacob. 
the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. What do you think about that? Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts is his name. Selah. Amen. When it talks about him being the king of glory and the Lord of hosts, it's talking about a time when there's great war and conflict, but the Lord of hosts means the God of angel armies. Amen. Warring angels that God has dispatched on our behalf. I believe that. Amen. We're going to see some angelic activity, I believe, here, that things that cannot be explained, it can't be explained away. Uh, we know that God's, he'll perform his work. Amen. Amen. So we see the earth of the fullness. He who has clean hands, purged and puned, uh, pruned. Lift up your doors, king of glory. There's a, there's a place that he's talking about. There's a protocol and a procession. So we see that this place that he's referring to is this Mount the holy place, amen? There's a protocol by which we go, clean hands, pure heart, and there's a procession by which he makes his way into the throne, into uh, the temple, amen? amen? So, what are, what, what are we going to see in uh, what's in store for 24? And uh, I just want to give you a little bit of things, if that's all right. Are we good? Yes. All right. What's in store? Now, what I've done is I've taken things that I felt that the Lord wanted me to look into and give you this. And no, uh, a lot of people will say, how can you go by just what a year is? Well, do you know God created everything in cycles, right? When it's spring, sow seed, right? Or actually grass seed, they say you can sow it in any month ending in R. The other months don't work too good. May, June, July, August, they're not good. But September, right on through to, uh, to the spring, are any words that have an R in them. So anyway, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. That's a season. There's a time with which you sow. And God created everything in cycles because it's the same thing, whether it's 2023 in the spring or 2024 in the spring. There's a time and there's a season. Time to plant, a time to uh, reap. Amen? So we know that... God gave us certain things for something, for things to, to uh, be most effective. Are you with me? And so what is God saying about this 2024? If you remember back in, uh, actually in July, I started a series that the Lord had led me to from the book of Ruth, and I talked about op doors of opportunities. Do you remember that? Anybody remember those? Doors of opportunities? And here was a, a Ruth who came from... Uh, Moab, she was a foreigner, but when she came to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, uh, after her husband had passed away, they returned to Bethlehem, she found herself in the midst of fields of favor, opportunities. Boaz comes along, and he sees this girl out there, and he says, who's the new girl? And they said, well, that's uh, Ruth, or Naomi's uh, daughter-in-law, her husband is dead, and he had taken an eye to her, uh, for her, and a favor was upon her. And she walked in the middle of the fields of favor. And I believe that that's what God's saying to us. Amen. That, that he wants you to put you in the midst of the fields of favor. That uh, some of the things she didn't even have to work for. Guys were just kind of harvesting and throwing it down there for her to pick up. There's going to be things that are going to be easy for you if you follow after God and be in God's place at God's time. Amen. Amen. So anyway, I talked about the doors of opportunity and opportunities are given to you, to me. I'm going to try and read most of this so we can stay on track uh, and on time. But opportunity is what's given for you to reach your potential. How many of you know that we, most of us don't, under, we don't realize our potential? Right? Someone asked me one time, they say, well, do you think you've reached your potential? And I'd say, I'd like to say that I will, but I can't say that I can because if I've reached my potential, what more is there? Right? Yeah. So you got to keep on. Hopefully we don't lose sight of the potential and still go after it. But opportunity God gives us to reach your potential. And that can be whether it's through training. Sometimes it's blood, sweat, and tears. And sometimes it's on the, the step or the podium of, of uh, 
winning the trophy or the, the, the medal, okay? Opportunities are favorable or advantageous circumstances or a combination of circumstances. Opportunity comes from the Latin word ob portum, which means it's actually a mariner's term when they would say opportunity was whenever they would be bringing their ships in and it was like they didn't even have to worry or toil or do anything. The wind just brought them in right where they needed to be. And that's what opportunity is, is when, man, you just go through smooth sailing. You got the wind of the Holy Spirit behind you, and he just takes you where. How many of you know that sometimes you can just fall into favor? <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how I got blessed, but, man, the Lord is sure good. Amen? Amen. And that's, that's what a, an opportunity is. God gives us open doors of opportunity. He gives us to move from one place to another. A door moves us from one place to another, from an, from a, uh, from an outside to go in or from a, from a prison to get out. They, it swings both ways. Doors represent stepping out, stepping in, and stepping up. And so anyway, I believe that you're going to see that this next year... There's going to be an opportunity. Some will be stepping out. Some people are going to be stepping into it. And some people are going to be stepping up to what God has. How many of you want that today? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. I'm giving you some seed to sow. Amen. I'm giving you a pouch of seed today. Amen. Amen. So 57, 84, and 2024, what do they have in common? Well, we have the 84 and the 24. We'll look at the last two things there. Uh, and we only want to look at that because the millennium is the 5,000 or the 2,000. The hundreds, we're probably not going to see enough. We saw that already, you know. Uh, but right now, we can focus on the decade and the, the year. And so anyway, the, the alpha, Aleph Bet is the Hebrew way of, of labeling things. We call it the Alpha Bet. We have, uh, was it 26, 26 letters in the Alpha Bet, including vowels. The Hebrew uh, Aleph Bet is actually 22 letters. And so what they do is they, every letter is assigned a numeric value. Aleph is number one, bet number two. They are having a, a numerical value. And each one of them in writing that's sort of like an emoji, they drew a little picture that kind of let them understand what that was. It was a picture or a symbol of the meaning of that year. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why does a year carry a certain meaning? God cares a lot about, about numbers. Uh, anyway, I, I read that uh, uh, I've listened to some different people, and I don't understand that. Brooks told me before that, that actually everything in creation can be traced down to mathematics, the mathematical ev evaluation. Even people who do science and so forth, or technology, it all boils down to mathematical equations and formulas and so forth. That's beyond me, right? How about you? <laughs> I, good. I, I was going to, hopefully nobody would stand up and tell me. Garner probably would, but anyway. <laughs> but anyway, they have a, a value and a meaning. Numbers are significant throughout the Bible. And the way we can understand numbers is with anything in the Bible, they go by the law of first mention or first use. However, the number or the, the word was associated in the very beginning, it generally it carries its way throughout the process. That's how you rightly divide the word of truth. Don't take something that was meant for one thing and make it something else. How we have done in our culture today because... You know, what used to be a mouse was something that you tried to trap, but now it's something you move around on a computer. And you, you know what I mean? We have different things like that. But anyway, numbers are significant throughout the Bible. And the number four is typical of creation in a mathematical form. It's actually first mentioned in Genesis, the first chapter, verses 14 through 18, when it talks about on the fourth day. And on that fourth day, God divided the heavens and the earth, or divided light and darkness, and he put uh, the sun and the stars uh, in the sky, put them there, and he had one rule by day and the other one by night. And the Bible says that God saw that it was very good. So it had to do with a connection between heaven and earth. The heavens were giving something to the earth that the earth was needing. Okay? And that's going to be important for you to understand. 
Because if we understand what four, and this was the fourth day of creation. So in the fourth day of creation, we see that God started this principle of allowing heaven to have itself manifest on the earth. Are you with me? Okay. So let's take it a little deeper. All right. On that day, he, he gave, created the lights, divided day and nights, and he said this will be for your uh, light and for your day, but it'll also be for signs, seasons, days, and years. And that's how we count the days. That's how we do the years, the seasons, and the signs. We know that the, 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 uh, the Magi, when they came from far east, they said, we have seen his star in the east, this sign. The angel told Joseph, or um, told the shepherds, uh, this will be a sign to you. So th God does give signs. We don't have to follow after the signs. We just follow after the one who gives them. The signs will follow us. These signs will follow them that believe. Amen. So anyway, days and years and all these things have a sign to them or a season. A season means the right opportune time for something. Okay. So look at the, the fours that we understand. Uh, we have the feast seasons, which is called the Moedim, which God said there will be, I want you to establish these feast seasons. And then this time, no matter where you're scattered, wherever you are around the world, he told the Jews to observe this as Passover, uh, first fruits, unleavened bread, uh, Pentecost, uh, tabernacles, and all that through that feast season. And they called that the Moedim. So those are the seasons. There are four elements that we have in the world today. The four elements are earth, wind, and fire, and water. You thought I was just going to start singing. You thought I was going to sing September, didn't you? Do you remember? Four regions, four directions, north, south, east, and west, right? Four seasons, summer, winter, spring, and fall. All you got to do is call. And I'll be there. Yes, I will. You got a friend. <laughs> this is getting bad. <laughs> Directions north, south, east, and west. There are four moons uh, in the lunar cycle. There are four watches in the day. They're set up uh, as they carried in, in military. They would say it was on the first watch and so forth. There are four uh, dealing with... Uh, with the population, there's families, tongues, nations, and lands. There were four wives that gave birth to the 12 tribes, four different wives that gave birth to those 12. Four types of sacrifices that were acceptable unto God. There are four cherubim, which are these angels, and the Bible says they have four faces and also four wings. There are four major prophets in the Old Testament. There's four gospels in the New Testament. There's, in the book of Revelation, there's the four horsemen that we see, the four living creatures that are around the throne. We see that the name of God, not using vowels, but they used the, let, the letters Y-H-V-H, four letters assigned to the name of God, Yahweh. We understand that, that uh, from what I understand, there are four chambers of the heart. Tori, am I right? Is that good? Four areas of the heart, ventricle, eight, anyway. Four areas of the brain. I must only have one. Anyway. Four visible areas of the eyes out, outward. There are four types of, of blood. Uh, there are four letters that are assigned to every DNA. Uh, the number 24 is an important thing. 24 represents divine order as does 12, except for perfect government made manifest is what it boils down to. It's what is perfect, but it's made manifest. It's come to realization. There are 24 elders that we read about in the Bible. It says around the throne there were four and 20 elders sitting upon four and 20 thrones. Uh, these are the tribes of Israel and the apostles. 12 and 12 make 24. There are 24 courses of the priesthood with the Levites that David had established that they have when he talks about and uh, when Zechariah was serving by lot. It was according to what their, their lot was or their course. There are 24 hours in a day, 24,000 miles around the earth. 
in reference to the Lamb, we see that there are 24 references to the Lamb in the book of Revelation. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? And it could go on and on and on. But I want to tell you why it's important for us today. So the number four, which both 84 and 24 have in common, is what we call, it's the name of Dalet. It's a fourth letter of the Aleph Bet, and it has the numerical value of a four. And it was used to understand when you said Dalet, they were talking about a door. So this is the year 20 door. This is the year 80 door. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Doors represent something that's open and shut. They represent opportunities for stepping out, stepping in, stepping up. Amen? So with this door, we have the number 20. The number 20 is the calf, K-A-F, or in some ways they spell it K-A-P-H. And it is represented, I don't, didn't bring a picture, but it's actually represented by the open palm. And do you know what you do with your palm? You open doors. Yeah. Yeah. Turn a doorknob. You can push. You can pull. Representing with that. Okay. The 24 uh, is, is calf delet, which would be a hand on a door. An interesting thing, though, that the reference of 24 finds its first place in the Bible. Uh, it's where, remember, the story where uh, uh, Abraham wanted to find his son, a bride. And so he sends his servant, Eliezer, to go out and search for this bride. And when you find the one that is for her, that for him rather, that you'll bring her back. And so Isaac is waiting for Eliezer to come back, and hopefully he has good taste, doesn't have high maintenance, you know, anybody, you know what I'm saying. Anyway... So Eliezer goes out and he begins to look and the, he, he comes up with this thought. and He says, I'll tell you what, the, a woman that comes here, by the, he set himself up by the well, by the spring, and he's got camels. He's got an entourage with him. And he says, if there's a woman that comes up here and offers me water, I'll say she's on the list. Now, if she goes out of the way and says, can I water your camels too? I'll say, hey, take me to your father because you are the one. Lo and behold... A uh, young lady comes up there, uh, Rebecca. And uh, so anyway, she walks up. She sees him there. And she says, sir, I believe you must be thirsty. She offers him water, and he takes a... <laughs> Rebecca, I just had to, had to think about you right there. Anyway, she takes, a, <laughs> takes the water, gives it to, uh, to Eliezer. Eliezer drinks the water. And then she says, I know your camels must need water too. Can I go ahead? And he said, yeah, let me tell you something. He said, my master has sent me out here, and he wants me to find a girl for his son. She doesn't know what he looks like. She, he doesn't, Isaac doesn't know what he's getting into. Rebecca doesn't know what she's getting into. But anyway, they go back to meet her father. They work out the arrangements, and he comes back. Now, the interesting thing is the Bible says that when she comes, she's carrying a pitcher. All right? P-I-T-C-H-E-R, which is what cardinals need. Uh, and anyway, she's, she's got a picture. The numeric value of adding up the letters for picture is actually, in the Hebrew, it's actually kaf dalet, which is 24. Now, I want you to think about this. Kaf dalet is a picture carrying water to one who is representing uh, the, his, his, own, his master and his master's son. In typology, we look at this and we see that uh, Abraham or Eliezer is kind of like the Holy Spirit searching the land in, uh, for the son, which is Isaac. We see this as the Holy Spirit being Eliezer and Jesus being the son or the groom Finding a bride, which is the church, for God Almighty. All right? Now, I want you to think about that. I'm not saying, it's a, it, I'm not saying Jesus is coming back this year. He could. He could come back today. But I believe it's a, an opportunity that we need to understand that we are getting close. Amen? Amen? And so, anyway, he comes and works everything out. I believe that 2024 is going to be a year when the Holy Spirit is doing his work. 
And he's searching around. And he's going to go out under the overpasses. He's going to look in the bars and the uh, all kinds of places. Yeah. He's going to speak to them. Amen. He's going to go in the high-rise buildings. And he's going to speak, yeah. searching for someone that will come unto Jesus the Son. So I believe 2024 is going to be a great year of salvation. Can you say amen? amen. Where he's gathering his bride together. Jesus said in Revelation, the third chapter, verse 20, behold, and that word behold means to, I used that a few weeks ago. If you remember, it was like, it was not like behold, hello, behold, it, but it's like, look, watch, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's with an amazement, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in with him. So I believe this is going to be a year when Jesus is knocking at the door and somebody's going to open up the door, and they're going to find fellowship with him. Amen? Amen. Revelation, the fourth chapter. Yeah, give him praise. Amen. Amen. Revelation, the fourth chapter, says that, that John says, and behold, I looked up. Behold, look, I looked up, and what did I see? I saw a door opening, in, an open door in the heavens, and a voice crying out to me, come up hither. Amen. And that's the rapture of the church. So we see that doors are very important uh, with what's going to take place after this. Are you doing okay? Amen. All right. We'll do it. Now, here we have this word called pay, which is 80. And the word pay, the numerical value of pay is 80, and it actually is a mouth. And you can see how they... The outline of that red there is actually the way the letter is, but it actually is a symbol of an open mouth. And pay means uh, word, breath, or expression, or to speak. So if you look at the Hebrew calendar, that we see that this is going to be a time of us, it's a decade where we need to open our mouths. We need to give forth the word. We need to express. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to blow through us and speak what he says. Now, what are we speaking? The door. Are you with me? Yeah. This is going to be important. So, with this, I've drawn up about eight, seven or eight different types of doors that I think we're going to uh, have. And uh, anyway, the first one I'm going to go through as fast as I can because we've got other things I want to do this morning. Uh, they're going to be transitional and transpositional. Are you with me? Yeah. Psalm 24, 1 through 3 says the earth is the Lord's fullness. There's a hill. There's a holy place. And it is, uh, he said, who may ascend? We see the place, the protocol, and the procession. So we see that it's a transitional thing. Psalm 24 is transitioning from where you are to a higher place. Amen. It's also going to be transpositional. I've given the reference there of Psalm 84. Uh, when we look at that for the year 84, we see that it's a place where he says uh, uh, how wonderful it is to dwell in the house of the Lord. Are you with me? Amen. I believe that we're going to find such great joy in the house of the Lord. You can, you're not going to wait to get here. Amen. Now, I'm talking about his house, but I also believe it's going to be manifest on this place. Because you don't know what's going to happen. And you want to be there just in case something shows up. Something, somebody opens the roof and lowers a sick person and they get up off of their afflicted bed and walk out of this place. Or somebody stumbles in here who's strung out on dope, but God sets them free and sobers them up in a moment. This is going to be one of those years and you're going to want to be in the house of the Lord. And he says uh, in verse 4 of that chapter, he says that we are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Verse 5, he says, my heart was set in the desire to make my way to get to the house of the Lord. And then in verse 6, he says, we passed through the valley of Raqqa, which was a time of grief and sorrow and weeping. It's going to be a place where you go from weeping to blessing. Amen. Amen. Wow. I believe that this is good. And he says, and then you're going to go from strength to strength. Amen. Every week when you start working out in the Holy Spirit, you're going to be stronger next week than you were this week. Amen. Going from strength to strength, not from week to week. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he goes on. He says, you know what? I'd just as soon be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord as to dwell in any other place. It's going to be wonderful to open up the doors because you don't know who's coming in. Amen. But we do know the king of glory is going to come in. 
Open up your, lift up your heads, open the gates, and let the king of glory come in. And then verse 11, I know you're going to like this one, because it says, in the house of the Lord, the God, when we're in that place, he will withhold no good thing. Amen. That's right. How many of you want to be in a place where God's not holding out on you? Amen. Amen. And he closed out, he says, blessed are those who trust in him. So it's going to be a year of transition and a year of transposition. You're going to move from one place to another. Amen. Amen. Next, it, they're going to be, it's a door of suddenly and the supernaturally. I think I spoke to you back in, in, uh, in September, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that, that I felt like this was something that was important. Acts, the 12th chapter, Peter's in chains inside of a prison. They're going to cut off his head. But in the middle of the night, an angel comes in, and suddenly the chains are broken. The gates are open. He goes past the first watch, and he doesn't even realize what's taking place till he gets out there because something this happens so supernaturally. This is going to be a thing where things change suddenly. Amen. How many of you like suddenly? Amen. It's like you can't even trace in between where something was and something is. Suddenly Amen. and supernaturally, man can't take credit for any of it. All you can do is throw up your hands and say, man, that had to be God. Come on, amen? amen? How many of you want that? It's going to be a time of deliverance. People who are strung out, we sang it this morning, don't you tell me he, he can't do it. I've seen addicts transformed, prodigals come home. You don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, total deliverance was amen. taking place. How many of you know somebody that needs deliverance amen. this year? Amen? amen. amen. Hallelujah. Next, it's going to be a time or a door of alignment for assignment. Amen. Now, if you look at the words, uh, it's interesting. Back in when it was the year 5782, 5782, I looked up the word uh, of the, the, in the Bible concordance, which is a dictionary, and the 5782nd word is the word ur, and it carried the meaning of being awakened or to stir as an eagle would its nest. And that's where it's used. When, and, and remember, I did the eagle thing. Judy made me a big eagle's nest up here. And the eagles were sore. And eagles started popping up out at, at uh, Horseshoe Lake. And people were taking pictures of eagles all over the place. And uh, anyway, there's an awakening that began in 22. In 23, it says that things are going to be revealed. When the eagle would start to get its eaglet. To, to move or to transition from just sitting in the, in, in, uh, uh, around the nest and being fed all the time, they started pulling out all the comfort things to where it got to the place where the, you know, the eaglet had thorns and thistles and stuff like that. It says, this isn't too, because the eagle was made for more, all right? And so it was a time when people started moving out from there. God was stirring them up and revealing what they were supposed to be. But bringing us to 578, Eight four is also the word uh, or E W R, but it carries the meaning on how it's used is actually chaff, which has to do with the threshing floor. Remember last fall when we were out at the pavilion, and I said I just keep getting this thing about the threshing floor. And uh, anyway, the threshing floor is where they brought in the harvest, and it was separated there, and the wind would blow, and the winnowing fan would blow the chaff from the the grain or the hole. And so anyway, 84 is representing a threshing floor or the threshold of a door. Yeah. All right? So I think it's pretty interesting. If you look at the word chaff in the Greek, it actually means to, and the reason I say that is the Old Testament and Hebrew and the, the New Testament, but the word in the Greek means to set in order, to assign, accomplish the utmost prophetic purpose. So I believe that God's got us at the threshing floor, separating, getting rid of the stuff that doesn't matter in order for us to be get, get on our assignment, be in total alignment for him to accomplish his prophetic purpose. I've been looking around, going through prophecies and so forth that have been spoken about us and uh, over this church and, and us personally. And I found one from 11 years ago, 2013, and you def I believe that we're right, we've moved into that. And he says in the beginning, he says, this is, you're called to set in order, set in order, set things in order. And this is a year to set things in order, amen, to align for God's promises and purposes. Next, promotion and provision. This is one that I love, man. This one really got me. So the Hebrew word 2024, 
uh, the 20, 2024th word of the Hebrew dictionary uh, or language is the word hara, which means mountainous. Okay, didn't we talk about that? Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord, yes. rising up there. Yes. So we see that this is going to be a year of rising higher in God. Are, are you with me? Amen. But not just that. The Greek word for 2024 or for 2024 is epigoregia, which means to furnish or supply. Now I want you to think about that. So it's not only promotion, but it's provision. Are you with me? And that word is used in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, when the Lord tells Abraham to take his son Isaac up on the hill to offer as a sacrifice. And he climbs up there and Isaac says, hey, we got the wood, we got the fire, where's the sacrifice? And he says, don't, don't worry about it. The Lord himself will provide a sacrifice. And while they're walking up one side of the mountain, they don't know what's going on the other side of the mountain. But there's a ram climbing up the other one who's going to get caught in the thickets, ready to be the sacrifice. And God says, don't you sacrifice your only son. I know you love me more than anything. He said, there's the ram. And so at that place, Abraham, or, or, Abraham named that place Jehovah Jireh. Or in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen. It will be revealed. So I believe that we're going to, the higher we get in God and pursuing after him, the greater the promotion, the greater the provision is going to take place. Amen. 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 You don't know what God's got moving in the background. You don't know what's taking place. You don't know what God's doing behind the scenes. But it's going to be suddenly, supernaturally, promotion, provision. If we operate in the season. I'm not saying that's going to happen to everybody. It will if you follow what you need to do. Are you with me? Amen. Now, next thing is this is the fourth miracle that Jesus did in John, the fourth chapter. They brought to him, had multitudes of people, perhaps up to 25,000, counting women and children. They had nothing to eat. It was getting dark. Jesus said, we got to feed these people. They said, well, I don't know. I think uh, Uncle Lenny's is closed right now. I don't know where we'll get the food. I don't think we could get it enough for anybody, you know. And he says, well, what have we got? And they said, well, there's a boy over there, five loaves and two fish. He says, bring them here. He breaks them apart, separates them, gives them to the 12 apostles, says, go out there. They've, they're sitting in groups of 50. He says, go out there and distribute them among them. And things began to happen. It began to multiply. Are you with me? multiplication and materialization is going to take place. These miracles are going to happen. It's not just the, the word that we talk about, but it's going to be the reality, the manifestation of the multiplication. How many of you know that we believe, I believe that God's going to multiply what you've got? Amen. He's going to multiply the seed that you've sown. Yes. You say, but what little bit is that going to help? God will multiply it. Amen. Amen. You ever see those challenges? If you'll give, we have a $50,000 challenge. If you'll give toward this, when we reach 50, another 50 will be, I believe God's in that business. Amen. I believe he says, if you'll do this, I'm going to take care of the rest. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a time of opportunities and opposition. <laughs> Paul says, he said, there was a door of opportunity open to me, but there, the adversaries were there. Just know this, that you will have opposition for doing what, what God wants you to do. Right. It's, going to come with, it's not going to come without opposition, yeah. but you've got to stand strong. You have to let the king of glory in who's coming with the host of armies, angelic armies, to stand in your... Uh, Amen. Amen? Amen? There's not a weapon too big. There's not an enemy too strong. Amen? Right. That can stand against our God. Lastly, well, sort of lastly... Almost lastly, <laughs> doors of activation and acceleration. Yes. Now, you have to understand, I got most of this back in the fall. But if we understand that these doors, the door is the open palm or the hand. Some doors are, are functional by pushing or pulling. Some are by walking. You remember when I was a kid, they used to have those mats out there, and you step on it, and it would open a door. You know, it was an electronic type of thing. Yeah. And now they've got the beams that go there, and you can, you know, and, and they're, they're motion activated. I believe that we're going to have to set some things in motion just by stepping out. Just like when the priests got to the river of Jordan, the Bible says they stepped out upon the water, and before their feet hit the edge, the water, waters parted from the left to the right. There's going to be some things, some doors that you've got to get in motion. Dale Gentry told me when he got called to preach, 
He was a, a sports announcer, but he said he used to go down to the airport. He didn't have any engagements, no place to go, but he went down to the airport and, got, and uh, started learning where it was at because he knew he was going to be flying out of there, and it wasn't long till doors started opening up for him. Sometimes you've got to do prophetic acts. Are you with me? Sometimes you do things in the natural because God's making something happen in the spiritual. And that's what happens when we clap our hands or lift our hands, open palms of surrender to the Lord. Amen? Worshiping God. Something takes place while we're doing this. Something else is happening. Amen? Amen. And then there is the type of doors that are voice octav uh, uh, activated which is the year of 80, the voice. It's going to be time when you begin to lift up your voice. Are you with me? Amen. Lift up your voice. Sometimes you're going to have to say these words. You have to war with the prophecies. You have to say, but, oh, we may see this, but that doesn't matter. God said this. And you start by getting the word of God. All prophecy is is hearing God say and then speaking what he said. That's what it is. You say, well, I don't know if I can hear him. Well, open up the Bible. There's plenty there that you can get. Are you with me? Are you with me? Uh, that's what I do every morning. People that like my, my posts, every, less than five people usually from the church. There are always these people out there that, that uh, I don't even know who gets them. I have people tell me here and there and, and so forth. You know, we read your declarations every day, you know. And, and the thing is, all I'm doing is declaring something, giving them something to start fueling their life with. Yes. Amen? Yes. So Job 22, 28 says this. You shall declare a thing, or actually in another translation, it says you'll decide, and then you'll declare it. You're going to make a decision in your mind, and then you're going to speak it. And he says, you shall declare a thing. Well, what is that thing? It actually is interpreted to a prophetic word. You're going to declare that thing. You say, well, why do they use the word thing? Well, it was the same thing that Gabriel said to Mary. She says, how is this going to happen? He says, uh, well, all, thing, all things uh, it, it, nothing is impossible. No thing is impossible with God. No prophetic word is impossible with God. If God said it, he will do it. Are you with me? So he says, you shall declare a thing, and it will be established for you. Amen? And then it says, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. When you want, it's like, you're going to be like a light coming out of your mouth. When you begin to declare that and say, God says, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the first and not the last. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my house. I'm blessed in my car. I'm blessed on my job. I'm blessed in the church. I am blessed, 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 blessed. And every one of those words are light going out there to give you a step to walk into that blessing that God has for you. Are you with me? Amen. How do you like this year so far? It might have been devastated, but it's not over yet. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The more is yet to come. I love what, what Judy sent me that picture. She said, your future is better than your past. Turn to somebody and say, hey, the best is yet to come. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The light shines upon your favor. You know, it was interesting that Joseph had these prophetic words and dreams and so forth, but he ended up in a pit, but he kept declaring what God said, and as a result, the favor was upon him. He found favor at Potiphar's house. He found favor in the prison. He found favor in the palace, and he was the prime minister over the, entire, the greatest uh, empire at that time of Egypt because the favor of God was shining upon him. When you walk, you know, there's, favor is not fair. You're, you'll be the most qualified. You may not have all the things that you need, but God gives you enough favor that somebody says, hmm, take that one. Give this to this. Find that. Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> I, I want this year. Bring it on. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, so start declaring God's word over your life. Start declaring God's word over your family. Start declaring God's word over your finances. When it seems like it's not enough, he's a God of multiplication and materialization. Amen? Start declaring those things. Say, I, I don't believe I'm where I'm supposed to be, but I'm here for now. But God, I, t I need your blessing on me right now. And his favor will shine upon you and you'll start being promoted and ascend. Are you with me? Amen. Come on now. Amen. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, speak. Uh, Speak the word of God over your marriage. Speak it over the church, over this church here. Speak it over this city. Speak it over this nation. Speak it over these elections. Amen? Amen. 
Come on, let the word of God go out there. I, I got one more scripture for you from Psalm uh, 81 and verse 10. Job says, declare a, a thing and it'll be established and the light of God's favor will shine upon you. But the psalmist said this. He said, open your mouth. I like the, amp, or the, uh, the passion tra translation because they made it rhyme. I like rhymes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> open your mouth with a mighty decree. I will fulfill it. Now you'll see. The words you speak, so shall it be. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Open your mouth with a mighty decree. I will fulfill it, God says. Now you're going to see. The words that you speak, it shall be. Yeah. So how many of you want to start declaring what God's word says? Yeah. Stand to your feet. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to do a couple of things. I've got uh, guys, if you can help me out, Les or Garner, uh, you can come down here and get something. I, wow, I went way over. Ooh. Well. Well, I want to say this while we're. Uh, Sharon, I know, has got to leave from here. Uh, 11.45, she said. Hold on. You stand up here. Stand up here. So anyway, Sharon told me that one of the baskets for the trivia is going to be from blue stuff. They got a signed jersey, all kinds of stuff. Just letting you know, the favor that, that, and then they started actually collecting blankets and stuff at the blues to help the homeless that are down in that. Isn't that great? The light of God's favor shining out. Amen. Yeah, I think that's awesome. We got some good stuff. We got Roy's favorites coming and, uh. You know, bakeries and restaurants and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, anyway, ice cream. So what I've done is I actually took this and had it printed out to put on our prayer form. So everything I gave you today in some sort of form is there. It will remind you the doors of, of, uh, that are open and going to be available to you if you begin to speak it. Say, start speaking. Father, I speak doors of transition and transposition over my life, over my children, over my family, over my loved ones. Over the, Start speaking these things. Suddenlies and supernaturallys and alignments and assignments and promotion and provision and multiplication and materialization, opportunities, and come against the opposition and activation and acceleration. And then put it there for your family, your personal lives, your finances. Declare these things. And I'm going to give them to you now. You're not going to fill them out now. you got all week, Amen. all week to practice and rehearse. Next week, we're going to tear them off. You bring them back. You'll keep the uh, white form for yourself to pray. We'll keep the yellow. And we're going to see God do some things this year. This is a year of doors. Let's take advantage of this opportunity that is before us. Amen. Amen. So what I want you to do is come down here, gather one of these, and then form a just spread out across this. And then I wanted to do this. I want to pray for the businesses, all the businesses that are represented today. Uh, we, we pray for Patterson Tire and Schaefer Excavating and all the different things that we've got here today. Startup businesses and, and uh, August Garden and Revival. And so when we're done... We're going to kind of, I'm going to have all the business people. If you operate, you do your own thing. I want you guys to take a stand down here in front of these people because they're all going to stand in agreement that your Amen. business, your, th it may be hard times for a lot of people, but it's, Amen. you're going to make it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How about that? Amen. I love it. I love it. Whew. My goodness. Did you feel the presence of God this morning? Yes. Yes. Amen. Capilla Plumbing, yes. If you're standing in for somebody, that's great too. Just do that. Right. Amen. If you're going into business, if you're thinking about going into business, if you need the startup, stand, stand down here because we're going to believe that what God did for others, he can do for you. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Recording studios and Amen. all kinds of things. We believe in God. Now, I'm not putting them above you, the rest. I'm just saying God has put them in this position now. So we want to put, and what we make happen for others, God makes happen for us. Yes, amen. amen. Ministries, Gina, Kevin, the cleansing soul ministry. Come on, come on down. Get closer. Bobby, 
Just stay, get, take him one. You got one, Susan? Okay. Everybody got one? Hallelujah. This is the time. This is the season. This is the moment building up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So you ready? Let's start. Let's start sowing. Lonzo, come on up here. He's the he's the Abraham of that business. (laughs) Hallelujah. In fact, I want you to hold your hand. I want you to I want you to hold your hand out there. That blessing that God took you from a little place has been multi-generational. You've stood through some hard times and difficult times, but God has blessed you. And that blessing that's upon you, I want you to speak that over these people here today. Could you do that for me, please? Just do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Yes. Hallelujah. We declare it right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you're going to bless every person here today, that you're going to take them to their highest point. Take them to their highest point, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we give you the name to praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, Father, these doors that are opening, we apply the blood of Jesus, the protection over every one of them. And the enemy may stand at the door of, the, of opportunity in opposition, but we thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus has been assigned against any uh, agent of the enemy, any human or any angelic for, or, or demonic force that would come in, that they would have to face the angels of heaven and the blood of Jesus, and they will not succeed, and they will not prosper. So we speak blessing over them right now, and Lord, we thank you for the opportunities, the doors that have been opened. May they all step out or, and step into and step up for what you've got for them in this next year. We decree it in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you for, that you gave beauty for ashes for Judy today. Thank you, Jesus. The, it's not all done yet. There might be pictures of, of ruin and rubble, but there's going to be revival in some way or another. Res- restoration, recovery, Father, and more, and much, much more. The future is better than the past, and we say that that's in the past right now. Father, give her wisdom with every step that she does and what, what, what lies from this point on. Again, give her favor. Let the favor of God light upon her way and every bit of this in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. And we give you praise and we give you glory. Everyone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. With a loud shout, let's worship the Lord. Let's give him praise. Amen. Praise God. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and just say, I love you. I'm just so glad to go to church with you. (laughs) Father, bless ice cream without calories in Jesus' name.